Once you finished selection and now you're going through OTC, how much different was OTC than you thought it was, or was it exactly you know what you expected? No, that that I didn't I didn't have much information on on that. So that was that was all day to day learning how it was. I think uh, that was one of those things like I, I talk about in my classes. OTC was uh, so it's all it's it's basically all shooting in CQB. But it's all it's all the basic stuff, mm-hmm. like especially starting out. Um, I was I was actually very disappointed, which which ended up being the best thing ever, like to actually be able to experience this and be forced to do the basic boring stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you get there, you kind of hear stories of what happens, you know, behind the fence. You know, it's it's a big big mystery. They're, these are the the best of the best. They're like ghosts, right? No one knows no one knows about them. Um, so when you make it and you get selected, you're like, Oh yeah, like I am going to learn some ninja stuff. Like, you know, like I'm going to be doing stuff that no one knows about, you know? And then, and then you start the shooting program and you're doing dry fire, you know, like you're doing day one basic (laughs) stuff. So, and I, like me coming from Ranger Battalion SF and, and having a deployment, like, I'm like, I already know how to do this stuff. I want to learn how to do, I want to do CQB. I want to, I want to shoot from helicopters. I want to shoot from vehicles. I, like, I want, I'm here to do the crazy stuff. Yeah, for sure. So, it, so it is, it's, it's actually the, almost the whole time, not, not that it's not badass, but you're actually disappointed because you're, especially the first three months. You're doing all basic, basic stuff. They're starting you back at, back at scratch, day one stuff, you know, um, dry fire drills, ready up drills before you even go into a shoot house. And then shoot house, you're doing CQB book answer. I mean, slow, slow stuff. Like you're not, you're not cruising through like you see in the videos. Mm-hmm. So you're like, like, like almost every day you're kind of disappointed. Like when are we going to do the cool stuff? Um, but where it all comes down into play, like, like learning the basic stuff. Um, and uh, like the, the basic boring stuff over and over, um, you're forced to do that. And I mean, you're, you're in the fear of your job every day. Yeah. Like you, you can get cut any day. So, I mean, you're doing that basic boring stuff, the best you can do, you know, so you're actually paying attention. You're actually trying to do that. Like whatever they're telling you to do, you're doing it the best that you can do it. So you're learning, even though you're pissed, you're still, you're still learning the basics, but mm-hmm. you're doing it so many reps that it's, it's just getting ingrained in your body. It's getting ingrained in your head. So ultimately, when it comes down to you actually starting to do CQB, like me for that that light bulb moment when I finally realized on training what actually works, um, like you start doing CQB, you start going overseas and doing it for real again, like getting in gunfights, all that basic boring stuff that you did for hours and hours and hours and tens of thousands of rounds, that is now – muscle memory train response or it's it's on autopilot Mm -hmm. so when it comes down to like being in a gunfight 100 percent of my my focus can be on the gunfight Mm -hmm. i don't have to worry about where my finger goes on the trigger i don't have to worry about going on fire i don't have to worry about going back on safe i don't have to worry worry about where my left hand goes on the rifle that is all happening on autopilot so i don't have to think about that i don't have to think about the shooting i don't have to get think about getting correct sight picture i can be looking looking at hands I can be looking at the situation in front of me. So it was, so going back to what you asked, OTC was kind of disappointing as you're going through it for me. Cause it was, it was, it was day one stuff. It was just, you're doing it so many reps and you're doing it more accurate and you're doing it uh, more, uh, more efficient and faster than everyone else. Even though it's basic boring stuff, it's, it's ultimately getting you to gut fights. Mm-hmm. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. Civilians that shoot, they all want to do the cool guy stuff. And me included. Like, I, I wanted to do the cool stuff. But by being forced to do that because it was an OTC, unbelievable experience. Like, to, to now, I mean, I, I, I'm not even close to where I was when I was operational. But when I was operational, it, it, it finally it, it made sense. The basic boring stuff matters. And that's basically what OTC is. Brilliance in the basics. Even though you're getting to do cool stuff, you're still doing it kind of book answer. Yeah. Yeah, that brilliance is the ba- in the basics is like it's awesome. It's a common common theme, you know. Nobody cares if you know how to do the most one-off thing that may happen one time in your entire career when you can't do 
do all the maybe in a gunfight that one off you know you you train you train for your constant yeah you know and that's bringing the gun up getting sight picture pulling the trigger which is which that's what it is so um yeah it's it was it was a good experience and and just just to be able to to do that because if if i would have been training on my own like pre-9-11 i was one of those guys that went to the range and did the running gun and stuff you know Mm -hmm. doing the burpees and then shooting running over hills and then shooting doing all the like the cool cool guy stuff and like setting up targets to where i or setting up situations where i thought would be a gunfight because i'd never been a gunfight that's that's how i was training i thought i needed to train all, all the all the wazoo stuff mm-hmm. which which ultimately what you need to be training on is your constant bring the gun up getting side picture pull the trigger but like how many how many civilians have the discipline to go to the range and do ready up drills for five hours yeah no one's gonna do that because they want to they want to do reloads they want to. They want to move and shoot. They want to do the running and gun and stuff. You know, they, they get on the clock and do the fucking the the fan the the fast fancy stuff. That's not what. That's not what matters in a gunfight. No. What matters. In, I mean, you need to be fast um, sometimes, but it's it's always comes down to accuracy, knowing what you're shooting at. Tom Satterley was saying kind of the same thing. He's like, you know, you, we train so much in the basics. He's like, I can shoot you and the next guy next to you while thinking about th- something that's going on over here. Cause it's, it's just, so, you know, it's just part of it now. Like I've done it so many times. That's exactly I've, right. Like that. It's, I don't even think about it. And I'm like, that's crazy. And that's what I was saying. Like if, if everything's on autopilot shooting wise, I can actually be thinking of other things. I can be seeing other things while I'm shooting. Just like you said, Tom said, that's like, that's exactly the, like as I'm engaging someone on target, I can still see or know what's going on to my right. Mm-hmm. And that's how it needs to be, but I don't. I don't need to. I don't need to be thinking about what's happening with my gun in my hands. That's mm-hmm. that's on autopilot because I have done. I had done the right thing enough times, over and over, to where it's just straight up muscle memory or autopilot. Yeah, yeah. Did you ever get to a point where you kind of look back and you're like, "Holy shit, I'm becoming a really good shooter. Like I'm getting really good at this." Or are you just always striving to, you know, be a fraction better, a little bit better every I th- time? Yeah, I don't think. No, I don't think I ever. I don't think I ever got to the point where I was like, "Oh yeah, like I'm, I'm at the top now," because I was always wanting to be better. Mm-hmm. So it's like I, I'll never, I'll never settle for like, all right, um, I'm there. Like I can always be faster. I can always be more accurate, no matter what. I mean, that's that's got to be the mentality of all the guys. But the that's what, that's right? why that place is so freaking cool to be at most people have that same mentality so it's like so it's it's like um you can answer that if you need to no <laughs> i don't know who that is um yeah everyone's striving to do the best so it's like if, if one person is doing something this fast everyone's going to be trying to do that same thing faster mm-hmm. you know like like at the unit there's there no one tells you to go shoot no mm-hmm. one tells you to go do pt no one no one tells you to go drive dirt bikes like every like everyone's gonna be out there training you know because no one wants to be that guy that's the the less yeah you know so it, it's it's pretty cool compared to like the regular army or even at range with Tang, you kind of have to force people to do pt yeah. you had to force people to train you don't have to do the unit i mean the, you, you could literally go in there and, and not shoot for a week if you want two weeks no one's gonna tell you you have to go shoot because yeah. no one's going to not do that. Yeah. It's <laughs> like, just, everyone's going to be at the range trying to be the best. Because a professional is going to be in there doing his, his job. Yeah, it's crazy. It's it's funny when I like um, – it doesn't matter what level you're at. There's always a spectrum of best to worst within a unit. Even at like Delta. There's still a worse shooter on oh, yeah. the team. Even though he's probably leaps and bounds beyond anyone else in the Army. But he's still yep. the worst guy there. That's got to be a tough pill to swallow when you're at the top, but you're still like, ugh, I got to get better, you know? But the cool thing, and that's what I think like, no one knows, no one knows how they select or what they select for, but I think that's that's one of the things. Like, even though you might not be the best shooter, you might be the best intel. Mm-hmm. You know, you might not be the best intel, but you, you might know how to speak a language. Mm. You know, like, everyone has their, their niche. Yeah, I mean, every everyone is better than everyone else in the military shooting wise. Trust me, but yeah, if you're the the low guy on the totem pole shooting wise, you might be you might be better than everyone else PT wise, or or you might be able to do that intel piece better. So it's like, even though you're not you're not the best at one thing, you might be the best at the other. 
but that's that's the cool dynamic because depending on the troop and the team like that's kind of what you're looking for when you're when you're picking people it's mm-hmm. like how is he going to fit in the team what can he what can he add value to the team wise so 